In this video, I'm going to show you how to restore the N64 joystick on a controller, how to do it the right way. Uh, there's nine screws, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's two next to the expansion port. For this, you're going to want to use a number one Phillips driver, preferably one that has a little spinny thing on the top, something you can put pressure on and spin at the same time. I fix it. They have uh, some really, really, really nice uh, drivers that have the little spinny thing on the top so that you can do the same thing, just a little bit nicer. But for a couple bucks at Walmart, you can get a full, um, full set of these and they work uh, just as good. The only difference is they're not magnetic, so I have a little magnet on here to help. So you take the uh, nine screws out and then you lift the rear shell straight up. What you want to do next is you want to remove the PCB board that holds this uh, rubber uh, piece in for the Z button. Now if you look, you'll see um, there's two tabs holding this in. This one right here, which is affixed to the uh, rear housing, and this one right here, which is not. You can see this one has uh, some give to it. A lot of people will just pull both of them and end up damaging that tab, and you don't want to do that. What you want to do is you take your thumbnail and just lightly pull to the left, and you should just be able to wiggle this up and out. And then once you do that, You'll use your uh, number one uh, Phillips driver and remove each of the uh, three screws holding it in place. Uh, once you do that, simply just take it out. What I like to do is I like to pinch the wires really hard right here. And you can just pull straight out. You don't want to pull up. You don't want to damage the connector. Uh, but if it's giving you a hard time, you can wiggle it back and forth as you pull it this way, which really helps a lot of times. Okay, now that we have the joystick out, I'm going to show you how to clean it, restore it, how to get rid of all the dirt and grime, all the scratches, all that fun stuff. Now, uh, first things first, um, there's a number one Phillips on the bottom. And to remove that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pinch the top and bottom of the joystick assembly. Here, I'm going to use my nicer one. So you can see it's nice because I can apply pressure and spin at the same time, which is great. So now you can see if I let go, it'll release this, the bottom part, but not the top part because the top part is held on with these two tabs. Now, in order to release these tabs, you want to lift, give some pre take some pressure off of the bottom part and then pull a tab out. If you don't, if you put the pressure back down, that tab will click back in. So you take a little pressure off, take that tab off, and then once you get that tab, you click that tab off, and the whole assembly will literally just come right up. So now don't worry too much about all the different pieces because when we go to put it back together, I'll show you where they all go. First thing I do is I take the PCB board out, take a toothbrush, and I use uh, some air duster, and there's two optical uh, readers right here, right here. I just, I've never had any issues, uh, even with dust being in them uh, from them not working, but you still want to clean this as nicely as you can. Uh, make sure there's no dust on it. Set that off to the side. We're going to take this uh, little bucket out, and as you can see, this is already clean. Um, if it's not, you can always take a toothbrush or some isopropyl, loosen any dust up, get it out, use your air duster. Either way you go about this, you just want to make sure that's nice and clean. And the first step is to take the bottom gear out, set that off to the side. You can see. Tons of gunk in here. So to remove these uh, off the side, you just pull this tab up and they slide right up. Pull it, push it up, and then it slides up. You can see, not too bad, just a little bit of dust. I'm gonna take the kid's toothbrush, put a little isopropyl on it, loosen all that stuff up. Here's the other, as you can see. This one isn't too bad, but you wanna make sure you get the the grime out of, uh, out of these little grooves right here. I just take the toothbrush and I literally, let's see if I can get this in focus. I just take it and I just go like this over and over and over again until I get everything out. Now that these are clean, we're going to set these off to the side. You can always just give this a light, you know, once over on the outside. Um, not really necessary. Again, now we're going to use our isopropyl. I'm just going to kind of get the most of it out. See, I'm spinning the Q-tip as I'm doing it. It's okay if you get a lot of isopropyl in there. 
the idea is to just get in there as much as you can. In order to clean these four grooves that hold the, uh, the joystick gimbals, drench the whole entire Q-tip so that it soaks up to the top part of it and then spin it like this. And you want to kind of get just the top part of it. If you look, you'll see these uh, four uh, grooves. I put a little isopropyl in there. And again, with the kid's toothbrush, I like to get down in there like that on each one. There we go. We just blow it out. We just want to make sure that this bottom bowl is completely clean. I'm going to show you how I clean these uh, gears last. So I'm going to set that off to the side. Now for the uh, top part of the assembly, place a finger on, on top of the joystick to prevent it from spinning around. I'm just going to move this down and it's going to come right off. And here's the top part. What we're going to do first is we're going to get a Q-tip. We can use the same dirty one that we were using before, uh, so we're not being wasteful. Take it and rub up and down. And then we're going to take it and while applying pressure, we're going to spin it around in the way that the controller stick would spin around in there to try to get in the, the light scratches that are in there. On really, really dirty controllers, uh, dirt and grime will set through this crack right here. So it's always nice to take the Q-tip. I always give mine a once over anyways. I just get a lot of isopropyl on this part because you want to get in that groove, this groove, this groove, and this groove, and just a little bit around here. And you can kind of take your Q-tip and just kind of get it in here just to get some isopropyl in there. Use your toothbrush. Really, really good on here. It really helps break up uh, some of the dirt that we weren't able to get with the Q-tip that kind of like rests at the bottom. Um, I'm even going to go back to the top. Uh, with some more isopropyl just because I'm super anal and I'm just gonna Press it down into the hole to get the inner ridge the idea is just to get really the joystick dust out of here So we now set that off to the side the spring uh, Really not necessary, but I just take a toothbrush and I just go back and forth while I'm Spinning it around just to knock any dust off that's on there a little bit right there right there and of all the places that you know completely wear out on a joystick i don't know why they thought to put it there of all places but um yeah so anyways don't really have to do too much you can just slide it on your washcloth or you can even if you just want to be super crazy you can take the isopropyl uh tip q-tip and just kind of run around the edges with it real quick either way set it off to the side you'll see all this dirt around the whole entire side of it. We're gonna get rid of all of that with isopropyl. I like to go up and down on this part first, and then back and forth. Move on down to the bottom part that, that rests inside of the uh, gears, and you wanna clean that really good. Let's take a little isopropyl on the toothbrush and uh, scrub it like this to it, and it really helps to get inside of these two grooves on the side. These two grooves on the side are important. I'll tell you why later. Also, there's a slight ridge on the top, separating the top and the bottom. Sometimes dirt gets stuck underneath of that. <laughs> there's so many places for dirt to get stuck on these controllers uh, on the joystick assembly. It is insane. You can see there's a little crud in there. You can use either a Q-tip or a toothbrush. Sometimes you'll find that the uh, that this little hole in the top is actually completely filled all the way to the brim with hand crud, just dirt, whatever you name it. What I do is I take the isopropyl, I get the Q-tip, just like that, drench it, and let it soak in for a while. And then what I'll do is uh, you could use probably an earring post if it was thin enough. But I use this uh, this 0.7 uh, Allen head that came with my uh, I fix it kit. Push it all the way down and then spin it. And then as I'm spinning it, move it up. That really breaks the dirt up. And then, you know, blow what you can out. So now we set that off to the side. Now we're left with the joystick gears, uh, the bottom one and the top one. And what I like to do with these is I just get my, my kid's toothbrush, put some isopropyl on it, and just 
go to town on them. Just kind of want to work it from every single angle you can. So we're going to set that one off to the side and clean this last little guy right here. Okay, now that we have all of our pieces uh, properly cleaned, uh, the next step is to properly lubricate everything. And for that, I'm going to be using uh, this stuff called joystick butter. It is uh, nothing short of uh, amazing, uh, to say the least. Um, I've been using it on my personal controller, or excuse me, I used it once upon a time two years ago on my personal controller, and it's still, it hasn't worn down at all. It just consistently stays perfectly lubricated. It is just, it's, it's, it's an absolute dream, um, this stuff. Anyways, the first step is to uh, lubricate this bowl. I just take a little bit and just apply it in the bowl. So for the next step, we just want to uh, put a little tiny dot, super tiny dot in each one of these grooves. Um, it's literally all it takes. Um, so do it to right there. And I don't even have to press it in anymore because a little bit already came out. Um, a little dot right there. A little bit goes a very, very, very long way. Once you do that, you drop it into the bowl like so. Then you grab your larger of the two if you look at them you'll see one is significantly larger the larger one goes in the bottom and we put that in there across and what I like to do is um, I put it just right in the middle just a little bit inside the crack inside the in the middle of it where it incurs the most wear once we have that part assembled I'm gonna grab the uh, top part same thing if you look You'll see one, two, three, four of the grooves, and I'm gonna do the same thing. Just literally a super, super tiny, shit, there we go. Super little tiny dot on each one. Nothing crazy. Again, you could probably do half, as, half of what I put, which would be literally next to nothing. The other trick is to Put a little in there, get a Q-tip, and just kind of work it into the grooves. And you will see that that kind of hides the scratches um, from the top part. You can still see them, but it really makes it look a lot better. We want to assemble the top part of this assembly. And the correct way to do it, make sure that these two dots, right here and right here, face to the right of the controller. It's just how it comes from the factory. It really doesn't matter. It could go in either way, but it just it's nicer to put it back the way it goes. Because those two knobs are there, you have to push it down and then twist it and then push it down again. And when you flip it over, you can always just, uh, like I do use my finger to keep it there. What you want to do is you want to grab your spring. There's two sides to it. Um, there's the bottom and the top. The top is much bigger, okay? And the reason you wanna make sure the bigger part is on the top is so that when it bends down, it clears the bottom. And you might have to look at it from a couple, couple different angles to figure that out. From the factory, this little part of the spring that ends is on uh, the bottom. I'm gonna grab this little washer and you'll see there's this little flat part at the bottom from the factory that also comes facing the bottom like that. And there's that little ridge inside of it, that edge to rest inside of the spring. Again, this whole time I'm using my finger to hold the joystick up, otherwise it would just fall out. If you have that placed, you want to find uh, the smaller half, just push down and then spin this like this. This is why I'm using my finger to hold it because if I don't hold it, sometimes it'll try to rotate, uh, the joystick will try to rotate with the gear. At this part right here, I don't fully put it straight up and down uh, like it should be. I do it at an angle like this. I don't see any uh, point in doing this, but since it comes from the factory like this, uh, I go ahead and put a little dot right here and a little dot right there. And then um, I just like that. Uh, same thing. I apply the joystick butter inside the gear on that side, on this side. in there and right in there. Now that that's all done, uh, one other thing I like to do um, 
even though we put some lubricant in the bottom of that bowl, I like to come over here and I like to put a little bit on top of this nub right here. If you want to spend a lot of time, you can apply really, really super thin layers uh, since this tip is so small, but I like to kind of go crazy with it. Take your PCB and press it in right here. Okay, and to reassemble it, you really just want to make sure this is, you know, pointing down. You don't want it to be like this or like that. You want to make sure that your joystick is, you know, straight up and down. You don't want it to, you know, um, you don't want it to be at an angle like that or like that. Um, really, you can compensate, you know, regardless of where it's at, just as long as it's, uh, you know, left and right like that. So I'm going to line the gear up, place it in. And then once that's in, press down. If you did it correctly, your joystick will be straight up and down. If you did it incorrectly, it'll be pushed in. So now that we have everything back together, we're pinching this shut. We want to get our screw back in there. And again, you don't want to over tighten it. Just want to make sure it's nice and firm. Uh, the lubricant that we used uh, kind of to evenly apply it I just go up down up down left right left right I do a big circle into a small circle and then I do the small circle out into the big circle okay now that we have properly cleaned and lubricated this N64 joystick we can in reverse order put it back into our controller while uh, there's different aftermarket options like the kitsch bent uh, joystick gears and uh, like GameCube style uh, joystick replacement options you can get for your controller. If you have an authentic N64 joystick, the best thing you can do is what we did in this video. I hope you found this uh, video uh, useful. Thanks for watching.